dark side, the Lord of Apocalypse, Thanos, the Mad Titan, Odin, the Allfather of Asgard, and Galactus, the Devourer of Worlds. Four of the most powerful beings in all of comics. Villains that are able to terrorize whole superhero teams by themselves. Universal beings capable of destroying planets. Gods nearly unparalleled in power. In a day, with each character in their prime, we're going to be throwing them all together in an ultimate showdown. So who wins? Well, let's find out. What's up guys, I'm Daniel and this is Danco. We do fight breakdowns every week, plus the occasional power ranking video like this one or things like that. So if that seems interesting to you, we'll sit back and enjoy the video. Hit that like button. If you want to, go hit the subscribe button while you're at it. Now let's get to it. So starting out, let's talk about Thanos. And I want to talk about him first, mostly because I just want to remind everyone that we're talking about each character in their prime. But that does mean base version. And that really only pertains to Thanos. Meaning that Thanos doesn't get the Infinity Gauntlet here. He doesn't get the Cosmic Cube. And he doesn't get the heart of the universe. It's just Thanos with no special add-ons or no special weapons or no special items. So what's this Thanos capable of? Well, ever since he was a kid, Thanos was obsessed with nihilism and death and eventually fell in love with the physical embodiment of death, Mistress Death. Wishing to impress her and win her love in return, Thanos gathered an army and completely destroyed his home planet of Titan, slaughtering millions of his race. And from there, while well, he began a search for more and more power in order to fulfill his goal of spreading death and destruction across the universe, all for his love. Thanos has strength that way, way outclasses even the likes of Hulk and Thor and other Avengers easily overpowering them and sending them flying with punches, even managing to manhandle Hulk and Thing, while at the same time fighting both Thor and Hercules. So like legit, four of the strongest heroes in all of Marvel, and Thanos is fighting all of them at once. The Mad Titan is even able to bust planets, destroying a planet in his fight with Drax the Destroyer and then bull rushing his son Thane straight through a planet, destroying that planet too. And while Thanos is very strong, I think his durability puts him in a class all his own. He can take blasts from Silver Surfer like they're nothing, shouts from Black Bolt like they're nothing, take hits from Thor and simply smile. He's even survived gas giants and planets exploding withstood black holes with the mass of multiple galaxies. Good luck putting Thanos actually down. Not even sure if that's possible. So then what about Darkseid? Well, he's the supreme monarch of the planet Apocalypse, the Justice League's worst adversary, the greatest enemy of New Genesis, and one of the biggest threats to the DC multiverse as a whole. He seeks to bend everything to his will and remake the cosmos in his image, all while searching for the anti-life equation, an equation that consists of immense power and potential to dominate all life in the DC multiverse. He's got absolute god-like strength, pimp-slapping Alan Scott with the power of all the Earth's avatars and a connection to the multiverse itself pimp slapping him, or staggering a fully powered Zeus without even coming close to his own full power. He was able to go toe to toe with the Anti-Monitor in an absolutely devastating fight, or fought against the High Father for seven days and seven nights straight, completely destroying the planet in the process. And just like Thanos, Darkseid is also impressively tough. 
he can just simply walk through attacks from the Justice League. No problem. He can survive planets being destroyed all around him. And remember his fight with Alan Scott, where he was fully connected to the multiverse? Well, Alan Scott finally stopped holding back and hit him with everything he had. The force of all planet Earths in the multiverse. And Darkseid was still able to pick himself up and keep standing. And then, of course, there's the Omega effect. Darkseid has complete and total control over his Omega Beams, meaning that he can lock it onto a target and follow them around wherever. They're powerful enough to hurt Superman, hurt the Anti-Monitor, and hurt Superman some more. And if Darkseid so chooses, they're able to completely erase anyone they hit, completely erase them from existence altogether. And then there's Odin, all father of Asgard, respected and feared throughout the multiverse. Odin is the king of the Asgardians, the wisest and most powerful of all the Asgardian gods and the alpha of the council of godheads. A lot of Odin's powers come from the Odin force, a magical source of power native to Asgard and primarily used by the Skyfather himself, even though it has been used by Thor and a few others throughout the years too. And with the Odin Force, Odin is able to do some absolutely crazy stuff. I mean, just listen to some of this. Odin has battled against a cosmic, sentient superstorm the size of a galaxy, fought against it for days on end, and won. He fought against the Egyptian god Seth and won in a fight that shattered galaxies and shook the very fabric of the multiverse. Odin was weakened during that fight too. He had just got his powers back. He still very much thought and reacted like a mortal. He still won the fight. And then he's fought against Infinity, who was created using half of Odin's soul managed to defeat Infinity in a fight that crumbled entire galaxies. And then there were his fights against Surtur. He's actually fought against this big guy quite a bit. He's shaken the Nine Realms in one of his fights against Surtur. And we've gone on to learn and it's been confirmed that each one of the Nine Realms are its own separate and distinct universe. Then Odin's also manipulated the whole universe in order to imprison Surtur. And when Surtur's eternal flame was burning its way across the Nine Realms, it was threatening to engulf the entire multiverse, well, Odin had absolutely no problem with containing that flame and stopping that threat. Basically, he's a true universal level threat, an abstract level entity. But then enter Galactus. After the destruction of his home multiverse, Galen made a deal with his universe's version of eternity in order to merge and be reborn as the cosmic being Galactus. As Galactus, his role in the universe is to bring equity in order to ensure that oversaturation doesn't happen in this universe too. This is accomplished through the power cosmic of which he's the living nexus. His power isn't infinite though, which is why he has to rejuvenate himself by feeding on planets. Galactus is strong enough to absolutely manhandle Thor and casually take out Beta Ray Bill and his own herald Stardust with just one hit. Then he's durable enough where that he can casually take attacks from pretty much every hero out there. And on top of that, can sit inside an exploding star or enter the core of a galaxy, absolutely no problem. And that's just scratching the surface. Galactus with the power cosmic is capable of a whole, whole lot. Like instantly one-shotting the Hulk and Silver Surfer or having a battle with Mephisto that destroyed planets, 
shattered stars and through galaxies into turmoil. He's approached five elders of the universe, cosmic beings who are among the oldest beings in the entire universe and simply drained them out of existence. He's had several fights that threaten to destroy the galaxy and destroy the universe. He can fight against and beat infinitely powerful reality warpers, and even his heralds are insane and in a tier of their own. End of the day, Galactus is straight up an abstract being in the Marvel Universe, on par with beings like Eternity and Mistress Death. So, those are our four fighters. Who would come out on top in a four-way fight between them all? Well, over the decades, Thanos has shown himself to be an abstract level enemy, freely sitting at a table alongside the most powerful entities in the universe, alongside Mephisto, the Inbetweener, and even Galactus himself. But also, throughout the decades, Thanos has fought against two other people in this fight, Odin and Galactus. And even though in his fight with Odin, Odin had said it's been eons since he fought a foe this powerful, Thanos still lost. I mean, granted, it was a very, very close fight, though. They both act like tanks throughout the fight. They're clearly close to the same power level. But Odin was starting to win, and he would have won it all if the fight hadn't been called off. Same with Galactus. Now, Thanos isn't completely helpless against the Devourer. He was able to blast Galactus and send him flying halfway across the moon. Might seem real impressive, but it was ultimately nothing more than just an inconvenience for Galactus. And here's what Galen does to Thanos in return. Just completely annihilates him, leaves him begging for his life. On other separate occasions, Thanos has even said that he's nothing compared to Galactus. Now, maybe he could match up against Darkseid. There have been plenty of debates about that fight over the years. But he was for sure going to lose a fight to Odin, and has been overpowered by Galactus multiple times. If you've already lost to two of these characters before on the actual pages of the comics, well then I can't say you're going to be the one who wins it all here. Thanos is out. Well, then I think that also brings us to Odin and Galactus' fight too, because they've actually straight up fought before as well, and they've proved to be a pretty freaking good matchup. Like first, they had a brief telepathic fight, and neither of them were able to get the edge over the other, and both are pretty powerful telepaths. Like Galactus has actually dominated Thanos before, and Odin has consistently mentally toyed with Thor over the years. So neither of them could get the edge. And Odin decides to just end this thing and charges forward with a gigantic headbutt. They both crash and fall down to Earth, and Odin is so weak from that one mighty headbutt that he has to enter the Odin sleep. Basically, he got KO'd, unless you just want to suggest that he decided to take a casual nap during the middle of a fight. Well then, what happens to Galactus then? He gets up, he heals himself, then he's ready to take on the rest of the Asgardians. So basically, Odin headbutts an already injured Galactus manages to get himself knocked out, while Galactus gets up just fine and heals himself as if nothing had happened. Thanos would lose to both Odin and Galactus, Odin would lose to Galactus. So I guess that leaves us with Galactus and Darkseid. He's still hanging around out there. We've kind of forgotten about him, but we still got to figure out how he lines up here. Now, at first glance, you might think that Darkseid is simply on par with Thanos. He'd probably lose to Odin, 
he'd for sure lose to Galactus. But let me introduce you to true form Darkseid. Now, for a long time, true Darkseid was just seen as a myth. Something that a bunch of fanboys created on battle forums to make sure that their favorite Lord Darkseid never lost a fight again. But in reality, True Darkseid has always been there. Since the days of Jack Kirby, you just kind of needed to know where to look for him. See, Jack Kirby created the new gods to be platonic concepts, where Darkseid meant to be the platonic concept of evil, to represent all the darkness of the reader themselves. That was always the original goal, but it's really only been recent times when Grant Morrison wrote Final Crisis and made the map of the multiverse that all the pieces kind of snapped into place and we got to see the full picture as intended. So let's start with this. Darkseid is a new god and the ruler of Apocalypse, but the universe where the new gods exist isn't actually a regular universe, but instead exists outside of the DC multiverse altogether. It exists inside the sphere of the gods, or the fourth world, and outside of the normal multiverse, or even space-time. So in order for a god like Darkseid to enter into the multiverse, they need to use an avatar, because their true forms can destroy reality. Because remember, like we said, new gods are living concepts. You can't try and cram a 4D concept into a 3D world and just hope that it won't shatter all reality. And so that means that Darkseid is constantly using avatars to operate in comics. Whenever you see the typical rock golem monster, that's really just a vessel for his power. So that means that every time he fought Superman or fought the Justice League or really whatever, it was really just an avatar. His true form looks more like this and is multiversal in power. Like, let me give you an example. When Darkseid was actually on his deathbed in the sphere of the gods and was falling from way up there down into the DC multiverse, while well, he was casting a gigantic shadow that was threatening to destroy the multiverse altogether or create a singularity that again was threatening to destroy the entire multiverse. And when Darkseid has revealed his true power in the actual DC multiverse, well, he was capable of literally one-shotting the quintessence characters who are the highest order of beings in the multiverse. This group consists of Ganthet, Hera, Highfather, Phantom Stranger, the Wizard, and Spectre. And at best, Odin and Galactus and Thanos are on par with this group. I mean, Ganthet is one of the guardians of the universe. Hera is the queen of all the Greek gods. The wizard is the thunder god and the source of Shazam's powers. Highfather is another new god, Darkseid's brother, and is the ruler of New Genesis. The Phantom Stranger is one of the most powerful magical beings in existence. And the Spectre is the literal will of God's vengeance and judgment. These are all the beings that Darkseid took out with one attack and any one of them could be seen to be on par with Thanos and Odin and Galactus, and Darkseid beat all of them. Not just that, but he actually beat six beings on this power level. So it would be like Darkseid beat Thanos, Odin, and Galactus, and then beat Thanos, Odin, and Galactus all over again, all with just one attack. Thanos is terrifying, Odin is mighty, and Galactus is all-consuming. But compared to Darkseid in his true form, they're all nothing. If Darkseid 
wants to actually win this fight and doesn't just send in one of his avatars, there is absolutely nothing stopping him from taking it all here. No real argument to be made. Dark side wins. But what do y'all think? Sound off in the comments down below. I know you're gonna have thoughts and feelings on this one for sure. Maybe you stuck around this long and made it to the end of the video. That's amazing. Thank you so much for watching and for supporting us. And if you want to go subscribe, well, go subscribe. You're going to see more videos like this one every single week. I'll see y'all then. I'll see y'all next time.